the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let's call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Israel is a luxuriant vine whose fruit matches its growth. The more abundant his fruit, the more altars he built. The more productive his land, the more sacred pillars he set up. Their heart is false. Now they pay for their guilt. God shall break down their altars and destroy their sacred pillars. If they would say, we have no king, since they do not fear the Lord, what can the king do for them? The king of Samaria shall disappear like foam upon the waters. The high places of Avon shall be destroyed, the sin of Israel. Thorns and thistles shall overgrow their altars. Then they shall cry out to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall upon us. Sow for yourselves justice, reap the fruit of piety. Break up for yourselves a new field, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain down justice upon you. The word of the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Always the face of the Lord. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. Seek always the face of the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Seek always the face of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, 
Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. I think it's easy to take for granted all those things Jesus did at the very beginning of his ministry that would have huge impacts on the life of the church and how she would be structured for for 2,000 years. One such thing is these 12 apostles. Firstly, we think of what Jesus could have done. Jesus could have treated all of his followers exactly the same without singling out these 12 men. He could have gave all of his disciples the same power and the same mission. But we see very clearly from the beginning this was not Jesus' plan. Jesus would form the church to be a structure, a structure with different parts, just like the human body, with different missions and different tasks. And Jesus did not have to appoint these 12 apostles, but he very much chose to. And in Luke's gospel, we even hear that Jesus prayed the whole night before choosing these 12 men. So this decision was a very prayerful decision and a a very intentional decision, and would be a very important decision for the very foundation of the church. And then as we think about these 12 men that Jesus chose, think of how odd of a group of men they were. Of all the people he could have chosen, he could have chosen the great Greek philosophers of the day, but he didn't. He could have chose the, 12, the, the many religious leaders of the day, but he chose none of them. He could have chose the powerful political leaders, but he also chose not them. But instead, he chose these 12 ordinary men from various different walks of life, each with their own talents and gifts and experiences, but each also imperfect and sinners just like us. And on top of that, Jesus would do the unthinkable today. Jesus gave them power over evil and to heal. In other words, Jesus was going to use these ordinary men to be his instruments of healing as they went out into the world. Again, we can take for granted what Jesus did and how important these decisions would be for the life of the church. But if anything, maybe we take away today this reminder that God loves to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. They don't have to be perfect, but God can still use that. And throughout the centuries, God has done it over and over again. Think of all the extraordinary saints, someone like St. Therese, this young nun spending most of her life enclosed in a convent in France. We think, what could God do with such a young and such a short-lived life? But God would do extraordinary things through her. Or think of someone like Juan Diego, who Mary would use to convert the whole country. And the examples go on and on. So maybe today we pray and hope that we can be numbered among those whom God uses to do extraordinary things. And now let us offer to our Eternal Father our prayers and petitions. Let us pray for the Church throughout the world. Let us pray especially for the shepherds of our Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the many who are sick and suffering this day. Let us pray for the continued safety and protection of our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray also for the intention of our Mass today for Edward Coma. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Eternal Father, we do offer you these prayers and all those many prayers we hold in our hearts, asking you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the, to, the, to, the, to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.